Thank you very much indeed. It's very kind of you. And welcome to the show. Uh, one of the questions I'm asked when I work on television, is it, a, is it a stressful event? Do you feel stress before a show? Yes, it kind of nerves you. But in what I would call the table of stress, the most stressful thing actually we go through is death of a spouse. That's the most stressful thing, followed by divorce, uh, followed by a moving house, followed by Christmas Day, followed by driving. So I suppose the most stressful thing you could do is take your dead ex-spouse to have a look at the house that you're going to move into on Christmas Day. <laughs> Personally, I find myself in this modern age, I find driving extraordinarily stressful. It should be easy. It should be, you know, get into a car on your own time, drive at your own leisure, park at your own leisure, do what you ever have to do and come back in your own leisure. But it's not like that. It's, it's just stressful. You're thinking, I'm going to be late. Oh, God, I'm going to be late. Oh, Jesus, I'm going to get there. There's going to be a traffic jam. Oh, God, what am I going to do? There's going to be a traffic jam. What I'll do? No, oh, yes, what I'll do? Yes, I'll go, I'll, go, I'll go the shortcut. That's what I'll do. I'll go on the shortcut. I won't take the long way. I'll go the shortcut. And then you think, no, all the other people know this is a shortcut. So they'll take the shortcut. No, I'll go on the long way. All those bastards who wouldn't go the shortcut, they'll go the long way. So the long way is going to be a traffic jam. Shit! <laughs> And then you see, you think, what lane will I go in? Do you ever get to that point? What lane will I go in? Shall I go on the inside lane? Middle lane, the outside lane? I'll go on the inside lane. I'll go on the inside. That's all right. I'll drive on the inside lane. That's nice, smooth, quiet, gentle. Some bastard will park a lorry there. <laughs> and then I'll have to come into the middle lane, and those people in the middle lane won't let me in, the bastards. <laughs> then you think, I'll go on the outside lane. Then what about the bastards who are turning right? You're stuck behind those bastards. You go in the middle lane. And you spend all your time waiting for people to come out from behind lorries and turning right. This is before you even get in the car. <laughs> Sitting there thinking, where will I park it? Have I got the money? Have I got the right money? They keep on changing those parking meters. Have I got 20p, 50p? Is it a 10p? Is it a new 10p? <laughs> will the old 5p pit? Just... <laughs> and the whole kind of thing, parking. parking. I mean, you just spend, I spend my life parking. Spreading out in an ever encroached circle, getting larger. Looking for somebody who's walking up the road with the car keys in the hand. <laughs> That's him, I follow him. I get done for curb crawling, for Christ's sake. <laughs> and you f see you follow fellows that are saying, they, they get into the car and they sit there and you, you, you're kind of like a spaniel. You go, <laughs> and they go, <laughs> they get on the phone. Women, I, I love women, but Jesus, women. Why can't they just get into a car and drive off? I say to her, I say, are you leaving? Yes. And she gets in. And she spends half an hour rummaging in her handbag looking for her car keys. Why in the name of Christ do women put so much crap in their bags? They just swirl it all around. Have you ever seen them? They just... just that's not in. They keep on putting the crap back in again. <laughs> they check the mirror, they check their hair, they check the makeup, they put the belt on, they ruffle their hair, they take the belt off. And I'm, I'm waiting to get in and there's an arsehole behind me. Beep, beep. Flash me so I drive off, they drive off and the bastard takes my parking place. <laughs> And I tell you another phenomenon now in this, in this day and age. That group of men who hover around traffic lights in bomber jackets, <laughs> waiting to clean your windscreen. I don't want my windscreen cleaned. <laughs> I feel totally intimidated now. I drive up, I see them, I go through the red lights to get away from them. <laughs> They're cleaning cars all day. Where are they getting the water from? <laughs> They don't, do they? <laughs> Jesus. And that's a whole business now. They sell flowers now, sell newspapers. In the summer, they sell you cold drinks. In winter, they're selling hot drinks. Where do they get the water from? <laughs> Tell you what, being a motorist, one of the most irksome things about being a motorist is to stand or be in traffic that's slowly moving and be continually passed by a pedestrian. 
He does it three or four times and you're thinking, you bastard! Why don't you walk around the block? Go the other way, you asshole! I'm actually being a pedestrian, that's great. To walk past the same motorist three or four times. <laughs> if you really want to get up the nose of a motorist, stand at the zebra crossing. And don't do anything, just stand there. <laughs> and they stop, and they go. <laughs> what are you doing standing there? I don't want to cross. Well, don't stand at the bloody zebra crossing. Go over there, you asshole. Ah! I don't know, I don't really know what car, cars, cars are extraordinary, but they bring, we become totally territorial. Have you noticed that within yourself? When you're in a car, you become territorial. You fight for an inch, a yard, a centimeter. You sit there blowing your horn at somebody in front of you who hasn't taken up that six inches between him and the next. Come on, I'll move my fucking right now. And why does that happen when you're in a car? You don't do that when you're, when you're a pedestrian, do you? You don't feel territorial when you're walking up the road, do you? You don't feel aggressive. You bump into somebody as a pedestrian. You don't back off and say, <laughs> You apologize. You say, oh, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon. Sorry, I beg your pardon. No, it was my fault. No, after you. After you. No, 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 no. Somebody passes you when you're walking up the road. You don't race after them, do you? You bastard, get up, get up, get up. <laughs> And when you're a pedestrian, you're much nicer. You wear a different suit as a pedestrian. I'm walking down the road the other day, and there's a car coming up towards me, driven by a woman, and the blinkers are going. They're just going, beep. She drives up the road. Now, if I was driving behind her, I would be thinking, you silly old cow, put your bloody blinkers off. But as a pedestrian, I feel helpful. I go, blinkers. <laughs> and this woman looks at me and goes, gee, gee, gee. This nice lady with a veil and a crucifix, gee. <laughs> I, I mean, the, the, the change that takes place in yourself I, I was walking down the road recently. It's a little old woman standing on the, and she says, and she's just, you know, she's, so I said, can I help you cross? And she says, oh yes, please. So I actually go out, and I stop the traffic. Stop, please, stop, please. And I get this little old lady, and I help her cross the road. And I say, are you all right now? And she says, yes, I'm fine, thank you very much indeed. It's very good of you. And that's it. I go around the corner, get into my car, drive around the corner. There's a silly old bitch in the middle of the road now. <laughs> and I don't want to help her now. I'm going to run her over. I'm saying, get off the road, you stupid car! <laughs> and have you noticed as a driver, once you get behind the wheel of a car, you call into question the legitimacy of every other driver. You don't sit there and think, Look at that silly man there. What the hell does he think he... What is that bloke up to? You think, bastard. <laughs> Look at that bastard. Look at him. Stupid bastard. <laughs> and you relate to them how they look. The fat bastard. Ugly bastard. Bull. Look at that bull bastard. <laughs> you don't have one iota of racialism in there. You're going, you black bastard. You yellow stupid get, get, get out of my road. Xenophobia creeps in. When you see foreign plates, you don't think, oh, there's a visitor to the country. <laughs> and there's, there's a thing of ourselves. We consider ourselves to be the perfect driver. We're all perfect drivers. We are the one person in the world who never makes a mistake. We drive perfect. You sit there and you analyze other people. See somebody trying to park and you're thinking, stupid bastard. He'll never get it in there for God's sake. Any cretin could see him. Shit, he did. How did he do that? A lucky bastard. The generosity of drivers. The 
can get you, actually being, being a generous driver in many ways can get you, get you into trouble. I'm driving, I live in Kensington. I'm driving down Kensington High Street recently. There's a man who wants to come out from a left-hand corner, turning. And nobody's giving him any way at all. So I think, poor bastard. I let him in. And I let him in. And he, he I suppose, feels because somebody's shown a generous act to him, he goes down the road and he decides to let somebody in. <laughs> and they drive down the road and they let somebody in. So when I get time I get a Hammersmith, there's 18 cars in front of me <laughs> that wouldn't have been there. And I'm thinking, what did I do? What did you do that for? What? <laughs> and there is the point. Have you ever been, when you, were, when, you, when you offer what I would call generosity as a driver, when you let somebody in and they acknowledge that, they just little beep on the horn or, and you feel a glow <laughs> swelling all over you. And you're sitting there thinking, my Mr. Nice Guy, there's two of us. There's not, not all bastards, there's two of us. We're nice. And he acknowledges it. And you feel very good. But if he doesn't acknowledge it, <laughs> have you been in that situation? You want to kill. <laughs> I'm sitting there, and if he doesn't acknowledge it, he just goes out like, you swine, you prat, by Christ, that is the last time I will ever do that for you. <laughs> The chances of meeting this driver again don't exist. So you avenge yourself on some poor innocent bastard the next day. You're driving down the road and there's some fellow sit. No, no way. I let somebody in yesterday and he didn't even acknowledge it, so up yours. <laughs> and there's a point where people take advantage also of your generosity. You let somebody into the traffic and other people take advantage of that while you're kind of nodding. Come on, come on, come on. And they go, somebody else goes, Ugh! And you go, wait a second, wait, one. I didn't say two, one. <laughs> and while you're waiting, three, zip, zip, and then some bastard from the right. And I'm sitting there thinking, what, what am I? What am I, that fat fart for a Christmas, for Christ's sake? <laughs> well, I tell you what, if you want to, the infallible way of finding the idiot, the one idiot in the whole of London, is ask for directions. What happens to people when you ask for directions? The, the brain drops down into their arse. <laughs> totally intelligent, coherent people. You say, excuse me, could you tell me how I get... To... Oh, uh, um, yes, 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 uh, yes. Uh, now let me see. Yes, you, um, uh, yeah, you go, uh, yes, you go up, um, and go... Left, yeah, le no, right, right, left, right. Yeah, you go left and then right, and right. Um, no, 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 maybe um, you're not pointing in the right direction. No, maybe you better... It's like taking directions from John Bloody Major. It's, it's all the, the people who lean into the car. You ever get those ones? You ask for directions, you've got a head beside you. <laughs> Little dewdrop beginning to come out of the nose. <laughs> you don't hear a word they say. You're thinking, all you're thinking is going to drop on my trousers. <laughs> You get one of those with bad breath. Yes! Well, you go. <laughs> That's when those automatic windows come into <laughs> Directions. I suppose Ireland is the best place in the world for directions. People will say to you, I wouldn't start from here if I were you. <laughs> I was in the... Uh, I was driving to, to Wicklow Town, and outside Wicklow Town there's a kind of country road, and I came to a cross section, and there was one signpost, and that had Wicklow on it, and the other way, Wicklow. <laughs> and there was a fellow sitting there, and I said, does it make any difference? He said, not to me, it doesn't. <laughs> the classic in, in, uh, on my way to Limerick. And I said to this fellow, I said, How, do you know where I, this place is? And he said, ah, yes, ah, yes, oh, God, yes. Uh, now, go down the road, straight down the road, following the rolls. Uh, keep going straight, and there's a, you'll see a turn on the right-hand side. Now, ignore that. Ignore that. <laughs> and then there's a second turn on the right-hand side. Ignore that one as well. And there's, there's two, three, four, five. Five turns on the right-hand side. Ignore them. Then you see a house on the left-hand side. You turn left there. That's where you want to go. 
And I said, well, why did you tell me about all the right-hand turns? Why didn't you just say, take the first one on the left? And he says, who's giving these directions, me or you? <laughs> yeah. Technical advancement in cars. Now, cars have changed. We have, I don't know whether they're increasing the performance of cars, but we have so much gadgetry in cars now. We, <clears throat> you know, you, radios used to have to fiddle with, didn't you? You have to kind of... <laughs> now you beep, you're there. But the CD, there's telephones. There's uh, video now, they've got the video, the vi video in cars now, which is all that communication between the family when you used to take your kids for a holiday. That's all gone now. All that family fun. <laughs> daddy, 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 daddy. <laughs> we're nearly there, daddy. Where are we going, daddy? How many miles, daddy? How, many... How long are we going, daddy? How long are we going, daddy, 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 daddy? I want to do wee wee, daddy, daddy, daddy. No, yeah, I want to do jobby, daddy, 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 daddy. Daddy, I did a jobby, jobby, jobby. jobby. <laughs> Ever come across that, that vomit, that chain reaction vomit, Daddy? I don't feel... <laughs> Technicolored yawn being splattered across the back of the car. All those games. I spy with my little eye. What if you're a dyslexic family? <laughs> I spy with my little eye. Somebody begin with uh, H. River. Yes. <laughs> In America now, they have a car which has what they call a voice identification code. When you want to open your car, you speak to it. And that voice identification is registered. So you walk up to your car and you have a code, whatever it is you want to say. You say, good morning, car, or how are you, or whatever it is. And the door will open. What have you got a cold? <laughs> Pissing down with rain and you can't get into your car. <laughs> We've been to the dentist. <laughs> You're done for breaking into your own car. And now in America, they have, and in a way, it's, it's very good, they have an alcohol detector that if you have been drinking, you get into your car and you put your key in the ignition key, it won't turn. It just refuses to turn. And if you continue to try and get it to turn, your car's computer will inform the police station's computer <laughs> that there's a drunk trying to start the car. Your own car squeals on you for Christ's sake. <laughs> Mercedes now have what they call, excuse me, I'm going to have a little sip of this. <sighs> Mercedes have what they call automobile intelligence. You have a computer in your car. <clears throat> and if there's any sort of malfunction in any part of the car, your computer will inform you. You'll be sitting there, and the computer will... Your windscreen wiper is malfunctioning. Your fan belt is broken. Your carburetor is burst. Your battery is flat. There is a puncture in the front tire. I'd sell this piece of shit if I were you. <laughs> and we have... Technology reminders, I mean, audio reminders, they're very difficult to deal with because you, they, they take on a personality. Cars begin to take on a personality. I've got a, a car that informs me when the door is open, the door is open. Voice says, door open, door open, door open. Now, <clears throat> every time I open the door of a car, I don't necessarily get in and drive it away. I could have it in the garage. I could be loading it or cleaning it. And he's in there going, door open, <laughs> door open. And I'm thinking, you silly bastard, aren't you? <laughs> door open. You're saying goodbye to your wife and child, you've got the door open. Door open, <laughs> door open. I know, I know, for Christ's sake, I'm just saying goodbye to my wife and child, you're mine. Door open. <clears throat> Safety belt, there's another one. That audio reminder. Safety belt. And he's not like, door open. This is a nasty little shit. Safety <laughs> belt. Safety belt. Safety belt. That's all it keeps going. Safety belt. Safety belt. It's my ambition to get into the car and get the belt on before he can say anything. Safety belt. <laughs> gotcha, you bastard. <laughs> and I, I work out questions. I sit there, I hold it up, and I say, what is this? Safety belt. Very good. <laughs>
It's the law that I must wear my David belt. Right. I should be fined 50 pounds if I'm not wearing my David belt. Well, door open. Door closed. I'm sitting there one day in the door, and he says, boot open. Boot open. Boot, little bastard. Let me get into the car, put my belt on, close the door, then he tells me about the boot. Why in the name of Christ, when I was outside saying goodbye to the wife and children, why did he say, boot open? Do you know what I do now? I leave the window open. I don't open the door anymore. I climb in the window. I drive to Birmingham. The little bastard doesn't know we've been anywhere. Amazing. Voices. And, and nowadays they have, they used to have in cars, um, your gauge, petrol gauge, used to be very simple. It used to be E half F. That was just it. You knew it. When it was E, it was empty. When it was at half, it was half full. When it was F, it was full. You didn't need anything more. Now I have in my car a little symbol of a petrol pump. But when it's full, it's red, it glows. And as it goes lower, it sinks. And when it gets to a certain point, the designers of the car feel that the the uh, driver must be informed that the petrol is going low. You're not capable of working that out with your own head. A voice comes on. Petrol. And this is not like the door open or the little bastard. This is an authoritarian voice. Petrol. <laughs> petrol. And the further you go without getting petrol, the designers, I suppose, have inbuilt us a slight panic. So this authoritarian voice goes from petrol to petrol. <laughs> petrol. Petrol. And the further you go, petrol, petrol, petrol. I run out of petrol purposely. <laughs> Walking on the road with a can in my hand, the car is going, I told you so, I told you so. You can really give your car a nervous breakdown. <laughs> Undo your safety belt, open the door, and run out of petrol. Petrol, safety belt, door open, door open. Thank you very much for listening. It's been very kind of you. And take care, drive carefully if you're driving tonight. <laughs> and if you have a God, I hope that God will go with you. Good night. Thank you.